Hello, everybody. I'm Krasia Tasio, and I have the pleasure to have with me here Helene Cerizo. And I invited her because she's a great natural healer, intuitive healer, and I completely trust her because I've seen her chart, and she is a real one, so she is a real healer. And she will teach us really to connect the dots, to connect, to understand the chakras, the planets related to the chakras, the the planets and the chakras related to our body, how to help ourselves to heal ourselves, how to support a uh, missing link in our horoscopes through the knowledge of the chakras and the planets. So uh, later on, when you like to find her contacts and to contact her, the details are under this video. So please, Helene, um, just I'm giving it over to you. Let's start about chakras, planets. It's my favorite topic, gemstones, minerals. Let's connect the dots um, in such a good um, order so that people really can understand it and make use of your great knowledge. Thank you, Krasi. Thanks for having me here. Um, I would like to talk today about the chakra system. And I think in modern culture, people kind of know what that is. You know, they, they've heard of it. Um, yoga is coming more into the Western culture. So today I wanted to talk about gemstones that, you know, we can work with for each chakra to balance them. Um, and I actually believe that this is something that is good for everyone to do at least two times a year, balancing all the chakras because, you know, just everyday stresses, um, we, wanna, we wanna keep our body and our energy clear and open. And there's just a lot going on in the world between transits and life and, you know, being busy and emotional things that happen. So, you know, People care about what they eat and their health, but this is another way to um, work on healing yourself is keeping these chakra systems in balance. And so um, first, I guess we can talk about, you know, each chakra, um, you know, starting at the base. Um, we have the root chakra, and this is really about survival. Can we point where the chakras are for those who um, don't know? Maybe maybe I can find a, a picture and, and share until yeah. we can. Yeah, okay. I might have, I could hold something up in a book, I think. I think I might have, I don't know. All right, please show us. Uh, yes, thank you. So here's a great reference book, one of my favorites. Um, and it has the chakra image here if you're not sure which um chakra where they are the root chakra is um at the genital area and the sacral chakra is in the area of the womb um i'll go into these deeper but just quickly while i have this open and then the the third chakra the solar plexus is in the stomach area and then we have the heart chakra at the heart. Um, chakra five is at the throat. And six is right about here. Right the about third here. eye. Yeah, the third eye. And seven is the pituitary. So that's like what we call the crown chakra. Can we relay those to the planets? Yes. So um, the root chakra is with Saturn. And so, um, you know, sometimes what I'll see is if one of my clients is having, having um, a difficult Saturn transit or if Saturn is a um, difficult aspect in the birth chart, you know, this might be a chakra that has a tendency to go out of balance. And so they want to always put more effort to keeping that um, chakra balance. And so this is about survival. So, you know, feeling grounded as well um, and security in life. And so 
The gemstones, I have some here. I, I Just let me make open, open a small bracket that you can really know you feel which chakra of each person is out of balance, right? Okay, yeah, so how do I do that? Um, what I actually do, um, you know, I want to grab a stone here. So if it's someone new that I haven't been working with, just yes. um, a lot of times I will first have them uh, hold a Herkimer diamond. And this just really helps them get into their spirit, create a spiritual safe energy for us to work with. Because, I, you know, this is a very intimate um, healing practice. You know, I'm working on the root chakra. So I want to make sure that they're feeling safe with me. So I like to um, just keep the vibes really high. And I, and I like to have, um, you have them hold a Herkimer diamond, which is um, native to uh, New York State, Herkimer. Um, it's a beautiful uh, stone that's good for working with dreams and just keeps it really high vibrational. Um, before I start the healing process, I will, um, you know, use sage and and clean the energy of the person. And of course, I, I do that for myself before I meet the client. You just burn the sage, right? Um, I have a specific way that I like to do it. But yes, yes exactly, around their body. And I also um, will clear their aura with um, a selenite wand, which which can be run through the auric fields down the body. This is really good um, to have for um, finding blocks within an aura. And it also is great for charging your gemstones. So when you clean your gemstones, I like to, you could run them underwater, sage them, and then keep them for a couple hours on the wand. It just really clears out the energy. So I do that, of course, before I meet a client and after with all the gemstones that I use. Um, and so, you know, um, another thing that I do beside, you know, when I'm feeling around the chakra to see, I don't need to touch their body, but I feel above it because the energy, you could feel it. Um, and if I feel any blocks, I also like to use a pendulum. So the pendulum will kind of show me, it does show, it shows me the flow, the flow of the chakra. So some chakras might be flowing sh like um, smaller and some might be bigger. So I like to kind of get them more balanced and even and running smoothly. Okay. You know, someone who has um, a blocked throat chakra, you know, what I might feel is the blocked energy, but I also might feel the vibration of like stickiness and like not a smooth rhythm. And that person might have a hard time speaking their truth. And oh. so, <laughs> yeah. And so with them, you know, we're going to work on balancing that throat chakra. So after the healing, I might also ask them to begin to work with certain stones to carry on their body more regularly. Um, okay, so back to the root chakra. Back to the root chakra, chakra and Helene, slowly, slowly, let's relate this to the planets and yes. the horoscopes. Because you are an astrologer, I forgot to mention that you're not only a um, natural healer, but you are also an astrologer. So you, you make great, really, connection between healing and astrology. Thank you. Okay, so um, Saturn. You know, um, if you're having a difficult Saturn um, transit, you know, the root chakra can easily be thrown off. Um, you know, recently I had this transit myself, um, with Pluto opposing, um, so a lot of, um, uh, in the sixth house and, and so this was a lot of affecting my health, um, and security. And so working with the root chakra, um, you know, you would put this, um, on the genital area. And Show this, we don't see it. What is this? This is red calcite. Red calcite. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. You can use um, more expensive stones. You know, I do have like a really 
but it's small, like a, it's, can you see that? Yes. It, it's a higher grade garnet. So there's different grades. This is a more expensive, higher grade garnet. You can work with the garnet. It's beautiful. I love garnets. Yeah. Right, isn't this pretty? And this garnet's another one very similar, but it has um, a little bit more of an orange. All hue right. To it. But you can see how these are just a higher grade. Um, yeah, so you can use raw ruby. You can use raw ruby for Saturn transits that are um, tough for you. Um, and so, and so then you would work with this and you would work with, you know, even if you're, if you can't be with someone like me that can do the healing work, you can lay on your bed and you can put this on the genital area and you can, um, meditate with it on and just kind of let that energy move into you. And you can carry this, you know, a little garnet in your pocket with you or on your person somehow um and that will help with the energy or you can get a ring right you know um so that's kind of this is really good for um saturn transits and you know challenging saturn transits and then we have um the sacral chakra which again was in the womb area so, um, you know, with this stone, this is, um, this is our very creative, uh, stone. show it, show it a bit, uh, lift it so that we can see what is this? This is an orange calcite. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, you could also use, um, you could also use moonstone for this. You, you could also use a moonstone or coral or carnelian, but I tend to use this big orange calcite. But if you have a moonstone, that, that also rules the moon. Yeah. This was my question. Which planet rules this area, this chakra? The moon, the luminary. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Moon. Yeah. Yeah, the stomach is the moon, oh yeah. Yeah. So, um... Pearl, can we take pearl, for example? But it's too, oh, it's too small. Sure. I mean, I would think so. Yeah. I would uh -huh. think so. In in the in the um, from what I've known, you know, people might not refer that in the books that I've worked with, but no one really uses Pluto. But obviously, this is creation. You know, the womb. So of course, you're very refer, right. You know that we should Pluto, use our intuition. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. Use your intuition if if there's a challenging. Um, aspect with the moon or even um you know just even um if you have um a strong moon in your chart you know where you're picking up a lot um i i find like um moon in the water houses like eighth twelfth house a uh, very, you, you're picking up a lot of people's energy and you're, you know, very like a psychic sponge. Yeah, you know, you, exactly. Yeah, I would say, you know, those, those people might want to work with that chakra a little bit more, keeping it clear. What about afflicted moon, like opposition with Mars, opposition with Saturn, for example, same story, right? Most definitely. Yeah, absolutely. In the natal chart and through the transit. Um, so if you see that transit coming up, you know, you might want to wear a moonstone necklace. Another thing, let's say the moon is combust, invisible in the chart, and the person is prone to moon diseases uh, or problems related to what the moon is lacking, being invisible in the chart. Would this be applicable also then? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and you know, there's other remedies today. I think today we're going to get into the gemstone, but there's other remedies that we can do with mantra and chanting and herbs. Um, but I thought for today we would start with this. Oh, sure. It, it will be, we can talk too long. We can make it in a series, of course. This is wonderful topic though. Wonderful. My favorite. Oh, thank you. I, I love it. I love it. I've been 
um, collecting crystals and stones since I was nine years old. <laughs> me, too. me too. I have mountains. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, it's like a job to clean my crystals sometimes because, you know, there's so many of them. <laughs> okay. Um, the solar plexus. Um, and some stones I like to use. I think with this, with the sun, is quite easy. There are so many, the solar stones, uh, right? Yellow in color and so many. But which one are you using? All right. We, I usually let my clients have a choice between the citrine, citrine. and the honey calcite. Um, I, I find that most of my clients prefer the honey calcite. It's gentler. Um, and so if you um, feel disempowered, this might also be Pluto. If oh, you're wow. feeling dis, right, think about it. If you're feeling disempowered, you're having, you know, or, or eighth house stuff, right? Um, challenging afflicted eighth house stuff where you're working on your, that second eighth house axis of empowerment. Um, you know, that solar plexus could, could be something you need to work on. When my solar plexus is off, like I will literally get a pain or if I'm around someone who I feel that, um, is trying to disempower me, I will feel a pain, um, in my solar plexus and, and the natural, like without even thinking, have you ever noticed sometimes when you're around certain people, you might put your hands there? Oh, I will have to notice this. Yeah. I know I, that there are people which get, which completely let me without energy. So this is... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And because I'm super sensitive, like I, I'm hyper aware of that. So, you know, I've, I've noticed like that's when I might start putting my hands there and protecting it. So if you're having, if you have in the natal chart, um, you know, say you have, Mars square Saturn in your natal chart, um, you know, or marred in hard aspects, you, you know, um, you want to, or the sun, or the sun in hard aspects, you want to work with that solar plexus. And um, it, I really believe, and I have seen through evidence that working with the gemstones can heal you. Oh, I'm sure. I also work with gemstones for astral magic, and it is truly amazing. It's yeah, true. this is ancient knowledge, which I'm so happy that comes back to. I know. Yeah, yeah. and it's and it's it is. It's and I think think of how children. Um, you know, I work with children, and I was talking about a crystal in my gemstone in my class for some reason I'm like what do you collect we we're asking what you collect and I said I collect you know rocks and they were all my boys were like so do I and I thought that was so cool and they all collect you know crystals and I was like how beautiful these children and just like yeah. I've been doing it since a child it's just um very innate that we're magically drawn to them you know without knowing really why um so I kind of got off topic. <laughs> no, but this is, this is important because this is ancient knowledge. Ancient, yeah. like really ancient. In Mesopotamian times, people would use crystals for healing. They would make them in powder. They would take them, swallow them because... Elixirs. Yeah. Yeah, with the belief that the planetary influence is more powerful when they would swallow the, the powder of the gemstones. So this is so ancient. It's lovely. Yeah, I love it. So, um, so you know, you can work with the yellow, the yellow or honey calcite um, for your um, solar plexus. If you need to, if you feel disempowered in any way, you know, take some time. You know, sage yourself, Epsom salt bath, clear your energy, and meditate with some citrine or the yellow calcite on the chakra daily. Um, and carry it on your person, especially when you're around people that you feel disempower you. Yeah. Um, okay, Venus, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mine Venus, too. Right, is the heart chakra. Um, and the gemstones for the heart chakra are rose quartz. Um, 
and so any afflicted Venus, you know, uh, any Venus un under stress in the horoscope um, by, you know, again, by transit or by natal uh, birth chart. And rose quartz is one of my favorite stones. Here's a giant one that I have. Oh, this one is beautiful. Really giant. <laughs> yes. yes. It was actually um, a little bit bigger and a little piece came off um, when I was suffering from a broken heart. And oh, I, omen. It is ominous when a piece would, 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 yeah. Yes. And I would sleep with this. Actually, if you have insomnia, uh, rose quartz is wonderful to sleep with. It, it, it's definitely calming and soothing. So I definitely recommend that also for insomnia. Um, but again, for the heart chakra, you would, you know, lay it on the heart chakra. Um, and what I also like to do when I'm working with a client is I do the front of the body and then I flip them over and do it again on the back because it's the chakra, you know, is also on the back. Um, but obviously you don't have to do that, but in the healings I do, um, I also offer, um, this green stone, you could work for the heart chakra. It's, it's a green calcite. I always give my clients a choice. I have a smaller rose quartz, but um, you know, for what they're feeling drawn to, and they have their eyes closed, so they don't really know, but I let them feel it. Um, when I work with the stones, you know, I use my intuition. I might use um, a watermelon tourmaline. Oh, or lovely. beautiful. Yeah, a watermelon tourmaline, or um, they have, um, do I have it here? No, I have a ruby uh, with, the, with the watermelon ruby, with the green and the pink. Um, that's another stone that you could use, but typically it would be the watermelon tourmaline or these, one of these, more comfortable size typically, but, um, and emeralds. Emerald is another stone. So if you have a broken heart um, or if you have, you know, difficult uh, Venus transit happening, you know, Venus square Saturn, Venus, I have that natally, uh, Venus square Chiron, um, you know, you might want to work with um, Rose Quartz regularly. Um, yeah. And, and just to say, you're showing raw natural stones that it's very important that we are using only untreated, unheated, undyed, unirradiated, only pure, pure, clean stones, right? This is very, very, very important. Yes, that's, that's very important. Um, I'm just much more drawn to the, the raw stone, stone. I just feel like you get more of the energy, the pure energy. Um, and obviously also after you want to clean your stones after you work with your own energy as well, you know, you don't want to just keep them. Um, if you're having a lot of heartache and you're working with that stone a lot, you want to make sure that you're staging that stone. How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you clean the stone? Okay. So, um, what I like to do is I, I like to run it under water. And then I get my sage wand and I will sage the stone and then I will lay it for a few hours on the selenite wand. Now, one thing that, you know, I see people um, recommending sometimes is charge your crystals in the moonlight. No. I don't like that. <laughs> Me, no. no way. No. And, and so, People who don't really know astrology, um, you know, what's happening is you don't know, you need to really know what's going on with that moon, <laughs> you know? And so whether you're making a potion um, or you're cleaning your crystals, you really, it, every full moon or every new moon is not the time. You really need to know what's going on under that luminary um, and so that's a big mistake that I hear often. Absolutely. Good that you mentioned this. I know. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, the Vedic astrologers say, put your stone in milk, maybe due to the lunar um, 
when the moon is ruling the milk. I really don't know how this works, but I read that the milk is some sort I, of purifying, I don't know. Yes, I have used milk before, milk and honey with the Shiva Lingam. Oh, right. Um, and that's more of like um, a ritual for, you know, different Vedic holidays, you know, and traditions. But mm -hmm. yeah, I have, I, I've only used it a few times using the milk. Um, but I see, I think they do that because it's an offering as well. Like the milk and honey is an offering to the gods. To the lunar god mainly, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think that's... <laughs> okay, and then we're... Okay, so the throat chakra, Mercury. And I, I was speaking about this in the beginning. Um, so, you know, if you have a Mercury that, you know is um you know debilitated or in a bad aspect or it's just not um where you want it to be you know maybe it's in a planet that's not that strong mm. um, and you need to speak up you know you might want to work with that yeah. um right because it doesn't have to always be um an affliction it could just be in a weak sign absolutely right but there are times that you need to maybe you have to give a speech or you know you have to really um refine your mercury and so um you want to work with the throat chakra and um there's a few stones that i like for the throat chakra um this is a blue calcite, which is, calcites are relatively affordable. This is um, some raw aquamarine from Poland. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Very beautiful, I love it. Right, me too, one of my favorites. I love aquamarine. Actually, my earrings are aquamarine. Um, it's one of my, one of my favorites. Um, Amazonite's another one, turquoise. Okay. Um, all the blue color stones typically are good. You can do what you feel drawn to or what you have at the house, I guess, you know. Um, but turquoise, aquamarine, and the blue calcite are kind of my go-tos for the throat chakra. Um, and again, you might want to you might want to bring that with you when you have to give your speech. You know, you might want to wear some turquoise earrings. Or today, I'm wearing my aquamarine earrings. Um, anytime that you have to do a lot of talking and you feel that you want to strengthen that throat chakra, it's a good way to do it. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, the third eye. And this is Jupiter or Neptune. So this is about, you know, intuition. If you want to work on developing your intuition, if you want to strengthen your intuition, um, you know, this is a really good chakra to work with um, your third eye. Also, if you're having um, transiting, challenging Neptune transits, you know, Neptune can make you foggy sometimes. Um, Neptune transits so you might you know you can work with amethyst um I like to you can use lapis lazulu as well which is a blue stone um but you can put it right about here all right here. this is amethyst okay mm -hmm. yeah this is amethyst here's, here's one that I'll use when I'm working with the client very clean one mm -hmm. yeah a little bit bigger see mm. um yeah, and you want to make sure the stones that you choose kind of are comfortable and lay flat. And, and that's why, um, you know, I have specific ones that are kind of my go-tos because you don't want anything really uncomfortable and bumpy, you no, know. No, of course and not. It's something to consider. Um, but, yeah, and any, um, any Jupiter or um, Jupiter and Neptune will rule, rule the third eye chakras Pisces I suppose yeah. yes Pisces um and then the crown chakra um for Uranus transits so if you're having um oh I'm having all my Uranus transits right now <laughs> but yeah, that I have 
I'm comfortable with it because I'm a sun Uranus person. So it, it doesn't throw me off too much, but I love it. I love it. Yeah. It can be very enjoyable seven years period, you know, <laughs> it can be very, you can enjoy knowledge, you can study yeah. a lot, you can learn new, new secrets, astrology, numerology, healing techniques. It's wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm really loving it. It's been a few years now. Yeah. Uh, and it's opposing my stellium. So all my planets. <laughs> Um, for Uranus, I like to use this seer stone. So it's a crystal. If you have a quartz crystal that you, you know, that's fine. But they call this a seer stone. And it, it is, um, it's raw, but it's, it's, they're rounded. I never seen such stone. Maybe because it's rounded, I cannot, uh, is it something like the, the, the mountain crystal or what is this? You know, I, I, if you want, I can read a little to you because I'm not, it's not like I can memorize for me. I know I see seer stone, but can you replace it with something known uh, like um, a mountain crystal? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, this, uh, this, here's a crystal. This is kind of referred as a goddess crystal. She has all this like magic on it. Um, and yeah, so any any white crystal, all right, or mm -hmm. crystal you can use. I have you know, there's some here, and there's different different crystals. You know, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, eight eight sides. So, um, you know, there's different different crystals, but um, yeah, a a, a clear crystal for the crown chakra for Uranus transit. Um, or Uranus aspects in the chart. Um, and this is connecting you to the divine. Oh, this, yeah. This is connecting you to higher knowledge, to, you know, the Akasha records, to channel in information, to higher wisdom and higher knowledge, you know, putting that onto the crown chakra, meditating with that at the crown chakra. This is going to pull you into alignment with your guides, and higher wisdom all right all right wonderful and um also do we have a little more time sure of course this is very interesting yes okay so that's that's working with the chakras and and the planets there but there's other things that i do for um any challenging planetary aspects so um, if you have a um, challenging moon aspect in your chart or transit, I do crystal gridding. So what this is, you know, um, the person would lay down and I create um, a grid around them on the floor for the moon. Um, and this we do with as like more of a ceremonial type of thing type of experience and energy work as well but it's a little more it's stronger so if you need something more more in depth than just the chakra balancing for really challenging aspects i do the rahu the k2 um i do you know venus all, all the planets we can do crystal gridding are you familiar with crystal gridding? No, no. Please say, explain. Uh, what is this? You surround yourself with the crystals or? Yes. So, um, basically how I like to do it is I create the shape of the planet with the crystals. So I will create a moon shape. I will create the um, symbol for Saturn or oh. the into the grid that they're laying on and i will select the gemstones that help with that planet while we do the work does that make sense yes yes i can imagine that people would lay down on the floor right yeah. Yeah. and then you surround them with the stones and then you make the sign like the venus sign you would make with yeah. rose crystals for example next to them or on the chakra yes on the chakra all right no, um, 
around them. Around them. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be sometimes a combination of both, you know, a combination of both. So they'll, they'll have it on the heart chakra, but they will also, um, can we pause it a second? Of course. Sorry. Okay. So we were on the crystal gridding. Yes. Yeah, so the crystal gridding, um, basically when I'm gridding, you know, I want to clean the whole room. I'll stage the room. I'll energetically, um, clean everything and put a blanket down for the person. And, and then I'll have them lay down and I will, I will grid around them. I will grid with stones that work to activate that planet. Um, and set an intention with them before that, what we're working on, you know, um, around that planet. And then we will do the healing as they, they're actually in the grid, you know, in the grid of Jupiter. Um, if they're trying to, you know, bring more abundance into their life or, you know, they just want to expand their knowledge. Um, you know, we, we can do a Jupiter grid. There's a lot of different grids we, we can do. Um, we can even, um, if someone's having heartache, you know, um, maybe someone has passed on, um, you know, besides doing a Venus, for the, if it was a Venus transit or a Venus heart um, planet grid, we can do a grid that's sending love to another person. So really working with energy in the heart and opening it up. And you can work energetically without even having physical contact. But what is the risk for you? If there is somebody who is really infected with very, um, somebody would come to you with very low vibrations, infected with lower entities, because we, elementals, because we know this exists. It's no, no secret for no one. Uh, what is the risk for you and how can you protect yourself from this person also taking off, sucking your energy, basically, of your body? Because this is happening. This has been an issue all my life since ah. a child. I've been dealing with that, but I know how to harness it now. I'm getting better. I'm getting, you know, it's a process. Um, so, you know, that's part of being a healer is the, able, the ability to transmute that energy to something positive. So, yes, you have to protect yourself. Um, you know, I always, um, will wear black tourmaline, um, like inside my shirt. Um, <laughs> no, it's, I need this knowledge because sometimes I also feel very, after having consultation okay. with the client, yeah. some, with some people, I feel wonderful and we exchange wonderful energies and yeah. rarely you have, you, you encounter people which can really completely make you uh, your energetic level low when you feel affected afflicted and i also need to know what to do it's yeah yeah i know um so i i do wear protective crystals um typically inside my shirt uh black tourmaline i'll stage myself i work with oils so um i like this white angelica a lot from young living um, you know, putting it on the crown, putting it in, there's, in the back of the neck, there's a sweet spot, and that's where energy comes in when people are sending vibes. I don't know if you ever feel it, like, if you feel someone watching you from behind. Oh, yes. You feel oh, that yeah. there. So you want to, you could put frankincense, or um, sandalwood, the protective purification oils to anoint yourself with before you, before every client. Um, I do this. I anoint myself with the oils. I know also, I don't know if you use it to put your feet into raw sea salt. It's also... Epsom salt baths mm -hmm. is yeah. very... Also, um, rose water. Rose is a very high vibration. Rose oils, rose water. So I carry around with me if I'm sometimes, you know, if I'm seeing clients live that I might be in a situation like that. 
Um, I keep a bottle of rose water and I will um, spray my aura. I'll even spray them, you know, to uplift them. But rose water helps really well. Um, and I also make sure I get alone time afterwards to recenter. You know, I'm a, you know. Or another natural way to clear your energy quickly, go out in nature. Yes. Go out in nature. Say a prayer, connect with the creator. Yes. yes. But it's so a lot of work. It's so not easy, right? No, it's, it isn't. It, it's, no. it's, you have to put the effort to be pure before and after. Um, otherwise, you can um, carry around the entities or, you know, you never know. I, I, I work, uh, I do a lot of events in public. So for, you know, companies where I might read for four or five hours straight, different people just coming up. And uh, that, that I can see often. Um, I've, I've just gotten better at like boundaries. You know, I think you have to be good with that where you're not going to take in. Direct with love, you know, but don't take it in. Exactly, exactly. Right. But this is something that when it's not easy to learn, right? It's, no, it took me a lot of years. I know, I know exactly. You get connected because we we have souls and we, you connect with everyone basically. And yes, and you have this risk of energy exchange. If it's a clean, pure, beautiful energy, it's wonderful. But this is not always the case. Yes. That's yes. a thing. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and, and that's, that's everywhere. You know, that's not only when you're doing a healing or a reading, that's just going to the grocery store sometimes. Yes. Yes. You know, like we're constantly, everything's vibration. Everything is energy. And, um, that's why it's so important, you know, who we surround ourselves with and how we show up and we have to show up responsibly with our energy um it's just everywhere you know? when you go to bed do you put specific crystals to help you you mentioned the red the the pink quartz but yeah. what do you do to provoke um good dreams to get rid of nightmares because this is also related to the chakras is there a specific ritual that you do and if you like we will just close this chapter so that we open another one for the oils essential oils and herbs uh so that please advise what do we do before going to sleep after purifying ourselves like we said nature or salt or the rose water or rose oils what do we do to get rid of nightmares oh that's a really good question um if you're feeling that um that that you know you're you're not protected at all when you're sleeping right um because i do feel that um energies can come in you know when we're sleeping the subconscious um you know obviously i think i like to work with the rose quartz i will sleep with it in my bed if i'm if i was at all feeling threatened um <coughs> like i was in um not, I wasn't feeling threatened, but I was in um, Salem where the witch trials were, and I was staying at a haunted hotel. It was it was haunted, and there were there were ghosts in the room. Oh, you saw you felt and you saw the ghost. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Yeah. And um, and it was a, a very old old hotel. I even I've seen in the in the old building the the uh, the energy of the souls that are have moved on. Um, you know, you, again, I would use the black tourmaline for protection as well. Um, and, you know, just say a prayer and protect yourself and call in your angels for support. Um, and my best advice is to surrender with love and, and, and put love out and not, um, entertain fear. Because never fear right they yeah, sense yeah. the fear right yeah yeah they'll feed that kind of energy will feed off fear so 
you want to um, come into the heart chakra, come into your center. Um, and, and you can um, imagine like a pink light around you. You can create you can create like a bubble, like an orb of protection through your visualization. You could pick a color, white, gold, pink, you know, create this energy of, of protection um, and, and just stay in the heart and that, that definitely will help. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Let's close this uh, chapter here so that we continue because this was really wonderful and I'm sure it's so helpful and people can really do this it's so simple to get all these uh, gemstones and, and minerals and really follow your advices thank you so much helene and people can find your contacts under this video thank you for having me crossy always a pleasure, pleasure to talk with you pleasure thank you thank you